Hi, this is Debbie, and today I'm taking a look at the Studio Katia Stamp Timber exclusive for Samsa Stamp. The floral frame set from Studio Katia for Stamp Timber has a lovely partial floral frame image and a bunch of useful script sentiments to pair with it. I wanted to watercolour those gorgeous flowers, and because I wanted to include the ring of the wreath, I decided to gold heat emboss the image. This way I get a lovely elegant line for the wreath circle and the bonus is that the heat embossed lines make for an easy way to watercolour as the raised lines of the heat embossing define the edges of the petals and leaves creating little wells to contain the watercolour. Watercolouring heat embossed images is how I first start out with my paints and if you haven't given it a go before I highly encourage you to try it out. Gold heat embossing gives a lovely warmth which is particularly appropriate for autumn colours but I also like to use white heat embossing which gives a lovely ethereal look too. When I'm painting I like the texture of cold press watercolour card, however the texture isn't always inducive for creating a clean embossed image. So when I'm heat embossing I use hot press watercolour card. It is still great quality, um, designed for watercolouring, but it has a smooth surface which makes getting a clean stamped impression easier. So I placed a piece of hot press watercolour card in the misty limed up the floral frame image and lifted it onto the door of the misty before treating the card with a powder bag. This will help prevent embossing powder randomly sticking everywhere. I then stamp the image in clear embossing ink. This is the sticky ink that the embossing powder will adhere to. I stamped it a few times to make sure I was getting a good impression and then sprinkled with antique gold embossing powder from Samsa Stamp. I tapped off any excess and cleaned up the stray particles with a soft brush before heat embossing the powder with a preheated heat tool. You can see here, as I tip the card to the light, the beautiful gold embossing. Now before I move on to watercolouring, I want to get the sentiment done too. I don't want to spend the time watercolouring and then mess up the sentiment. So I stamped a greeting from the floral frame set. The hello just nestled nicely in among the top of the flowers. Again, I treated the card with an anti-static powder bag, stamped in clear embossing ink, sprinkled with embossing powder and heat set. Now we are ready to watercolour and I've taped the piece to a board to help prevent warping when adding lots of water to the card. I've speeded this video up so that I can get as much of the footage in as possible, but I also feel that when you see this type of watercolouring speeded up, it helps to show the ease of this technique. As I mentioned, the raised lines of the heat embossing not only outline each petal and leaf so that you don't need to worry about defining the areas, as you would if you were no line watercolouring, but they also create little wells to contain the paint. This means that you can be watercolouring one area next to another and not worry about the areas bleeding into one another as long as you don't overfill the wells. I started by watercolouring the leaves. I must admit that I love greens and blues and so foliage is often more of a draw for me than the flowers are. I then moved on to the flowers and started with a pale pinky wash over each flower before bringing in deeper mixes for the centres. For the rest of my time watercolouring this image, I tried to build up the layers and colours using greens and blue mixtures of Daniel Smith watercolours, such as Cascade Green, Indigo and Luna Black for the Lees, with touches of quinacridone gold for highlights and variation. For the flowers, I mixed Pyrrole Scarlet and Hansiola Light with lots of water for the base layer, and then brought in deeper mixes based on Alizar and Crimson for the centre. The actual flower centres are based on quinacridone gold, I kept going in with deeper mixes, adding touches here and there, and slowly building up the layers. My aim is always to have some areas of lighter highlight colours and some areas of deeper shade to bring the image to life. I then mixed a muddy blue colour based on indigo and painted a swash of colour from bottom left to top right. I wanted a bit of colour in the background but didn't want to paint the whole piece and I think this swash adds that touch of colour and as a bonus creates a sense of movement too and draws the eye. I finished the piece by splattering with a solution of perfect pearls, then white gouache and then leftover blue paint. I removed the painter's tape and when dry cut the panel to be just smaller than an A2 card base. I added foam adhesive to the back of the panel and added it to a Nina Desert Storm card base cut and scored from the £100 weight for sturdiness. I do like to add a sprinkling of sparkle and shine to a card, especially a floral card, and so I pulled out some enamel dots from Hero Arts in shades of pink, and also some sequins from Little Things by Lucy's Cards, and added those in three places on the card to form a triangle, which according to design rules is supposed to be pleasing to the eye. And that completes my look at this latest Stamp Timber exclusive from Studio Katia. 
The floral frame is gorgeous and really suited this fun and easy technique of watercolouring overheat embossing. I'll leave links in the YouTube description below to the products that I've used today, as well as a link to the coordinating blog post over at lamdudedesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today, and if you've enjoyed this tutorial, I'd be delighted if you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Also, if you'd like to get notified when a new video is out, don't forget to hit the bell button next to the subscribe button too. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.